Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari ST A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari ST games, some of which I grew up with, and some of which are new to me. Today is one of the latter, and it's slim pickings down the end of this alphabet, as I mentioned last time. Uh, we're at Z now, for the second time, uh, and we're looking at Zynapse. This was a 1988 release from Houston, um, and it followed a pretty well-received 8-bit version of the game of the prior year. And that original 8-bit version was done by a guy called Dominic Robson, who had come to sort of a certain amount of fame for a successful port of the Commodore 64 classic Euridium to the ZX Spectrum. This was previously thought to be impossible, um, and so obviously him managing to actually pull it off was noteworthy at the time, um, and it allowed a, a whole new audience to enjoy a great game, an all-time classic of the era that never made it to Atari 8-bit. Um, well, there you go. So, the, um, the actual ST version and the Amiga version, the 16-bit versions, they were moderately well-received back in the day. Um, the 8-bit versions were widely praised and got all sorts of awards and sort of classic ratings and things from the magazine to the time. But the 16-bit versions drew a bit more criticism for being unoriginal and being a bit too difficult. By the time we got to the 16-bit era, there was a certain amount of snobbery towards um, fairly straightforward arcade games. So if you just released a straightforward shoot 'em up you would tend to get blasted for unoriginality, even if the shoot 'em up itself was pretty good. So Zynapse kind of suffered a bit from that um, at the time. I've never played it though, so I'm interested to give it a shot because I know it's quite well regarded by a fair few people and Houston normally put out some pretty solid affairs. So I'm interested to take a look. So let's go play Zynapse. Okay, here we are with Zynapse, converted by Microwish, coding by Howie. Don't think any relation to Howie Davis from last week's Yogi Bear game. Um, and graphics by Pete Lyon, who you may remember from a few um, games that we've previously seen on this series. So, I've never played this before. Um, I know that Houston stuff is generally pretty good, generally quite well presented. Um, but I also know that this game was uh, sort of regarded as fairly unoriginal back in the day. But uh, we'll see. Play one, prepare for combat. Right. So we've got some fairly straightforward shooting action going on here. Are these power ups that I'm collecting? How do I use those? Space bar is pause. So every time I pick one of those up, it seems that that, that icon in the middle is changing. So I need to work out how to actually use that. That would probably be helpful, wouldn't it? Ouch. Hmm. Holding down the fire button makes the status bar flash as well. Is that charging something? Apparently not. Nope. Well. Is it going well so far, isn't it? Oh, you can destroy stuff from the ground. That's nice. Oh dear. Game over, player one. You are not rated. You know what, I'm going to take a moment to actually look in the manual, because I feel like what I'm missing there is probably of fairly critical importance. So I'll be right back. Alright, let's try it again. I think I know what I'm doing now. So, apparently, what happens is when you hold down the fire button... You crash. Um, what you're actually supposed to do... It, oh, God! I'm not going to be able to demonstrate this ever again now, am I? Just, I don't deserve to be rated for that. Well, maybe I do. You are rated absolutely terrible. The worst person who has ever existed. Uh, 
Right, so supposedly what happens is you hold down the fire button and that puts your fuel scoop into collection mode. Um, your ship's supposed to change colour, but it doesn't seem to do that. It's probably best that I just focus on the shooting, isn't it, at this point? Oh my god. <laughs> I, I'm I'm kind of seeing what uh, where these criticisms for high difficulty were coming from. Because the tr trouble is, you've got a very large player sprite there, and this is from that era of shoot 'em up where your whole sprite was a hitbox. Right. Oh. Okay. Still not 100% sure I understand this, but let's let's keep trying. We'll get there in the end. No, we won't. We will not get there. Right, that made a noise like it was activating something. But I just didn't I didn't see any difference. Oh god, you can crash into scenery as well. <sighs> right, I'm gonna master this. I'm going to get some sort of additional weapon. Ah, there we go. Right. So I've now got droppy bombs. Which allows me to hit ground targets. Alright, let's see what this one does. Oh, that's interesting. Is that like locking onto stuff? I think it is. Those are like homing missiles, aren't they? Yeah. Now we're getting this. No! I bet you lose everything when you die, don't you? You do indeed. Okay, so basically this is going to be a game about strategic upgrading. Sort of picking the right upgrades at the right time to be able to progress through the level. Right, I can now fire two missiles at once. And I think I've increased the rate of fire of my basic laser as well. Uh-oh. How'd you get past that? They seem to deliberately get in your way. What does this do? Well, that's a speed up. Okay, so like in most power-up shooters like this, your first your first power-up is always a speed-up. And what does this one do? Well, that seems to replace the homing missiles. It does seem to be a bit more effective than the homing missiles, though, actually. Because you don't have to move that sight around. Interesting. Let's see if we can get another one of them. Okay, yeah, so now we can fire two. Oh, God, you're huge. You are a boss. Ouch. 
Not sure how far it sets you back when you die. I don't think it's the beginning of the level. Doesn't matter. I am rated though. That's a really cumbersome way of entering your name. Alright, let's try that again. Now we've got a better feel for that. Okay. Right, I like those missiles, so let's... Try and take aim for those. Ow! Oh, it does remember what you'd cycled up to in the power-up display, though. That's interesting. Oh, my God. Again. Yeah, this is... This is entering territory of game I want to like, but it's making it very difficult. If it was just a little bit more forgiving with the collision detection, or if your ship was a bit smaller... This would be great. As it is, it's a little bit cumbersome. That may well have been the intention, but... I don't know, it just, fe it just feels a little overly harsh. I don't seem to be able to get any more upgrades. Oh no, I can. Oh no! That's good. Straight for the missiles. Oh, I like those ones because they, they go through enemies. That's how they distinguish themselves, I think. Yeah, they go through enemies and they don't get destroyed when they do. So let's have some more of those. Oh, it's so difficult to dodge those things. Right, again. Again. Against my better judgement, I am sort of enjoying myself. So let's hang on to that feeling while it lasts. Oh, because I can feel the rage bubbling just beneath the surface. Give me that. This is another good demonstration of um, games that felt the need to remind you what you were playing at all times while you were playing it. You see down in the lower left, there is a significant portion of interface devoted to just telling you that this game is called Zynaps and is by Hewson. Just in case you forgot at any point. Oh no! Just in case you forget. Last try. Probably. Subject to performance.
Oh, I bought that up. Tits. Come on, give me my super missiles. No! Zynaps. Zynaps, you make it so hard to love you. It's a nice looking game though, I'll give it that. As I say, that is something that Houston were quite well known for. As Houston is still responsible for, I think one of the most technically impressive games I remember on the ST, which was Nebulous. Sort of the, the rotating tower effect in that was absolutely gobsmacking at the time. Not convinced I can actually upgrade those missiles any further. I think two might be your limit. Let's get some more bullets in. Oh, you can only have one of them. Can't have missiles and bombs, eh? Oh, this is no good. Oh! One more. One more. One more. Because it'd be nice to clear the first level, wouldn't it? Don't you think? I think that would be nice. But it's not going to happen, is it? <sighs> Shush. It's going to happen. Going to happen because I'm brilliant at computer games. I am not brilliant at computer games, you should know this by now. Especially not notoriously difficult old 16 bit home computer shoot em ups. Hey, give me my missiles. There we go. I suddenly get so much easier once you pick those up. So the things on the status bar in the middle are obviously showing you what weapons you've got equipped. I'm not sure what the second one along shows you. I don't know. The speed up also feels quite a lot like a liability. <laughs> Just because it makes the controls a bit twitchy. Which is not necessarily a good thing. Oh no! That was going so well! That's really upsetting. And it was entirely my own dumbass fault for flying into the floor. Probably best for my own sanity if we stop there, isn't it? 
And anyway, that's the Zynaps. That's a pretty cool shoot up, actually. I <laughs> I joke about uh, the fury that that was instilling in me, but I was actually quite enjoying myself there. Um, definitely one you need to practice a bit to get good at, though, because god damn, that's difficult. Yeah, if you've never played an old shooter where your entire ship is your hitbox, yeah, it takes a bit of a bit of practice. But anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing. New episodes of Atari A to Z are on Tuesdays and Atari ST A to Z on Thursdays. Check out Atari A to Z.wordpress.com for a full archive. Do please also check out my other projects, MoeGamer.net, where I explore Japanese and Japanese inspired games from yesterday and today, and VideoPackGames.wordpress.com, which aims to catalogue the small but well formed library of the Philips G7000 Video Pack Computer, also known as the Magnavox Odyssey 2. You can also support my work on Patreon or buy me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.